some of the things Christian leaders are saying in response to the inauguration of the President Joe Biden. Christian leaders across the nation voiced their congratulations and prayer for peace on Wednesday as President Joe Biden was inaugurated as the 46th President of the United States. Biden's inauguration marked the transition from President Donald Trump's administration and signaled change for many. Russell Moore, president of the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission of the Southern Baptist Convention, tweeted his congratulations to Biden, writing, Congratulations to President Joe Biden. You have my prayers for blessing, wisdom, health, and success in leading our country. Moore posted. Beth Moore, who has openly criticized Trump, also tweeted about the transition of the presidency, reminding Christians that Christ is bigger than political leaders. Rulers of nations have come and gone for 2,000 years, but the church remains. We did not know all that would befall us four years ago, nor do we know the times ahead. But the task of the church remains unchanged, to know Christ and make him known, to be salt and light in this time and place. We are anchored to an unshakable throne beyond the veil, rooted in the measureless love of God. Our house is built on no shifting sand, but on solid rock. We are built up by the Spirit, grounded in the Word. Come what may, we, the people of Jesus, have the right to be faithful. Trump supporter Franklin Graham, who has voiced concerns over a Biden presidency in recent days, asked Christians to pray for peace during the transition. Today, as our country inaugurates a new president, there are concerns that there would be violence in Washington, D.C. and in state capitals across the nation, he posted. I encourage Christians to make this a day of prayer for peace and calm and praying for our new leaders, President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. That's what Graham posted on the day of the inauguration, which was on Wednesday. And Johnny Moore, the president of the Congress of Christian Leaders who informally advised Trump, also offered his congratulations to the new president. Congratulations to Portis Joe Biden, the 46th president of the United States, and VP Kamara Harris, stated more in a post on Twitter soon after the inauguration. You can count on my prayers and the prayers of tens of millions of evangelicals whose commitment to pray for our nation and its leaders knows no politics. And on the other hand, Franklin Graham says Biden should call off the Trump impeachment. Evangelist Franklin Graham of Samaritan Spurs is hoping that newly installed President Joe Biden would stop Congress from moving forward with the impeachment of Donald Trump. In a Facebook post that he made on Wednesday, Graham praised the 46th president of his conciliatory words during his inauguration as Biden called for unity between both Democrat and Republican parties. Graham, who is a vocal Trump supporter, went on to caution that the nation would be further divided if Democratic leaders push for Trump's impeachment despite no longer being in office. I hope the president Biden will stand up to those on Capitol Hill who want to impeach Donald Trump and tell them to put this behind us, he contended. Graham believes that if Biden truly wants to bring unity to the nation, he would stop the impeachment from going forward. If he wants to unite the country, this would be a huge step forward. I encourage everyone to pray for him, he concluded. Last week, Congress voted to impeach Trump for incitement of the insurrection following the U.S. Capitol attack on January 6 that left five people dead. While Trump is expected to stand trial before the Senate, no official hearing has been scheduled yet. Though, according to the U.S. News, Biden wants to focus on filing his cabinet picks first and COVID-19 relief plans before shifting course to the Senate trial. Chuck Schumer, the new Senate Majority Leader, asserted on Tuesday that the trial will proceed as planned. Let me be clear, there will be an impeachment trial in the United States Senate. There will be a vote on convicting the president for higher crimes and misdemeanor. If the president is convicted, there will be a vote on barring him from running for office again, Schumer asserted. 
The next several months will be very, very busy and very consequential period for the United States Senate, he continued. Let us begin our work in earnest.